And while on that visit, it seems he and Kim Jong-un have not made any resolve in their ongoing war of words. The president saying in a tweet tonight, why would Kim Jong-un insult me by calling me old when I would never call him short and fat? Oh, well, I try so hard to be his friend, and maybe someday that will happen. With no end in sight to the tension between the U.S. and North Korea, the men who served in the Korean War decades ago are sharing their concerns. KCTV5's Natalie Davis talked with them at a Veterans Day event in Johnson County. The Korean War is often referred to as the Forgotten War, but with all that's going on right now between North Korea, South Korea, and the U.S., it's all but forgotten. There are so many stories amongst this group of Korean War veterans. I arrived in Korea in the dead of winter in 1952. I got my letter from El Presidente on February 3rd of 1953. After serving in World War II, Chuck Wittig was called back to help with the Korean War. He received two Purple Hearts and a Silver Star. Got shot, shot up pretty good by a sniper and uh, then I, then, and then they sent me back to the States and I was in the hospital for 13 months and nine operations, but I'm a survivor. Survivors who can't help but fret over the fact that the problems they helped fight in Korea are still problems. That was uh, 60 years ago. It just seems like a forever struggle. No end in sight. Oh, say can you see Today, both our national anthem and the national anthem of the Republic of Korea were sung, a sign of the country's continued alliance. Our nation honors her sons and daughters who answer the call to defend the country. He referred to the audience of Americans as my heroes, pleading with them to support South Korea once again. North Korea is, is probably our biggest threat. Uh, and I don't know that it'll ever end. They cling to hope that the president's trip to Asia yields results. He's doing a great job. Hopefully his uh, trip over there is really going to be beneficial. Natalie Davis, KCTV 5 News.